So let's not uh, let's start our discussion for week number four. But before that, let's recall our last topic, which is the photosynthesis. Um, photosynthesis is important uh, for is important for this new topic because we you, you must understand the process of utilizing sun or photon for the plants to create energy and that energy will be consumed by heterotrophs or what uh, what we know as the consumer and uh, the consumer will use the glucose to create its own energy and in the term of cellular respiration so we know that the photosynthesis have a chemical formula of C6H12, uh, photosynthesis have a chemical formula of 6 carbon dioxide and 6 H2O and sunlight as an input and it will create a product of one molecule of glucose which is the C6H12O6 and a byproduct of oxygen. So any herbivores, consumers that eat the plant that contain glucose, they will digest it and then the glucose will be used in the cellular respiration okay so cellular respiration that is the process on how the heterotrophs create or consume their food okay so cellular respiration it includes glycolysis Krebs cycle and electron transport system or and the chemiosmosis so here are the objectives for today's discussion. So those objectives can be seen or can be read on our module. Here are the terminologies or words that you must be familiarized first before we tackle our topic. First one is ATP. So you're already familiar with the ATP. That is the energy currency of all cell. So that is the main star for this topic or uh, discussion. ATP, it means adenosine triphosphate. ADP is the adenosine diphosphate. While the NADH is the nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. FADH is the flavine adenine dinucleotide. Another term are aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration uh, is under cellular respiration. Uh, uh, it is a type of metabolic reaction that needed oxygen. Okay? So for the aerobic respiration to occur, it must uh, need oxygen for it to convert chemical energy into ATPs. And that is the counterpart of anaerobic respiration. So an aerobic respiration, uh, it is a process or the metabolic process wherein uh, it needed, it doesn't need the oxygen, but it still can produces a little amount of ATP. Next one is glycolysis. So glycolysis, uh, it is a process in which one molecule of glucose is broken down to form two molecules of pyruvic acid or, or known as pyruvate. So glycolysis is the first step in our cellular respiration. That is the step, uh, the first process that the glucose will uh, take upon. Next is the Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle is the second step in the cellular respiration wherein it is known as the citric acid cycle. Uh, Krebs cycle, it is a form for, uh, for two molecules of pyruvic acid wherein it utilizes carbon dioxide uh, two ATP molecules, six NADH molecule, and two FADH molecule. So this is the second step. For the last and third step, the cellular respiration is the ETC or the electron transport chain. So electron transport chain, uh, it is where om most of the ATP are being created, okay? So almost 20 plus or 24 ATP. Electrons are passed along the chain from one protein to another. So from the word uh, transport chain. So there are several, several, several electron transport protein 
that helps to transport electron and then create ADP or adenosine triphosphate. And for the last part is what we call the chemiosmosis. That is a part of uh, within our mitochondria. Next, again, so chemiosmosis is the movement of ions across the semi-permeable membrane bound structure down to its electrochemical gradient. So later on, you can see uh, what is chemiosmosis. So that is a part uh, that is already embedded in the lipids. Next is the ATP possible for the great production of the ATP. So ATP synthase, uh, this is where the chemiosmosis happen. And then the last one is the cellular respiration. So cellular respiration, uh, it is a process in which cell converts sugar into energy. So as you can see, uh, cellular respiration uh, will start at the end product of the photosynthesis, which is the C6H. Okay, so parang binaliktad lang siya na photosynthesis, ang ating cellular respiration. So to create ATP and other forms, uh, forms of energy to the powerhouse or power cellular reaction, cell require fuel and an electron acceptor which drives the chemical process of turning energy into a usable form. So most of the ATP that has been freely floating or commonly uh, used by our cell are uh, reused, okay? So some of them are being uh, phosphorylated, okay? For them to become ATP, to uh, ADP in form and form into ATP. Next, okay, so let's start. What is cellular respiration? So cellular respiration, that is a metabolic reaction. Okay, that is a process wherein it takes place in the cell organism to convert chemical energy. So from the food that we've taken, such as the glucose, uh, will be used to create chemical energy. And that chemical energy is the ATP or adenosine triphosphate using the oxygen that we inhale. Okay, that's why it is important for a living organism to uh, inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide is the byproduct of the cellular respiration. Okay, so from the oxygen or nutrients in the, into ATP and then it was released, uh, it releases waste materials. So the reaction involves in the respiratory our respiration are catabolic reaction. So when we see catabolic reaction, we are going to break down large molecule into smaller molecule, such as glucose. So glucose is C6H12O6. That is a large molecule. For us to use the large molecule, we must catabolize it. So in the process of catabolization, we need cellular respiration. Okay, so those six carbon Later on, through the process of glycolysis, is it will become three glucose, okay, or three carbon, and that a uh, smaller unit of molecule uh, will be released and then used to fuel cellular activities. Next, glucose is converted to pyruvic acid which can enter either aerobic or anaerobic respiration. So like what I've said, the first step in cellular respiration is to break down the glucose. And that uh, process is known as the cellular glycolysis. That process is known as uh, glycolysis. Uh, after glycolysis, glucose will convert it into pyruvic acid or pyruvate. And then the fate of pyruvate or pyruvic acid, it's either become aerobic respiration. Aerobic is a long process to create ATP, while anaerobic is a short but minimal amount of ATP released or produced. So the two types of cellular respiration are, are aerobic and aerob anaerobic respiration. And most of them, uh, aerobic and anaerobic respiration occur in our powerhouse of the cell, which is the mitochondria. 
So here are the three stages of cellular respiration. Uh, first one is glycolysis. Glycolysis happen at the or outside of the mitochondria, which is the cytoplasm. So dito po sa glycolysis, per, uh, glucose will undergo in the process of glycolysis and will produce pyrobic acid or pyruvate. And then afterwards, afterwards, the pyruvic acid will go to the Krebs cycle or known as the citric acid cycle. And after that, the product or the process will continue on electron transport chain or ETC as well as the chemiosmosis. In each process or in each st stages of cellular respiration, uh, many ATP or there are ATP that has been produced. Okay, so overall in cellular respiration, there are 36 ATP produced uh, in these three stages. So the first one is glycolysis that occur outside the mitochondria known as the cytoplasm. Krebs cycle or citric acid as well as the electron transport chain occur inside the membrane of the mitochondria. Okay, so here is the overview of our cellular respiration. So glucose will be converted into pyruvate using the process of glycolysis. So for the catabolization ng uh, larger molecule into smaller molecule, it will uh, produce only 2 ATP. Okay, so in, and any NADH on produce uh, use at the end of our cycle or stages. So once the pyruvate is already created under glycolysis, uh, it will undergo or it will attach or there will be uh, acetyl coenzyme A attached to our pyruvate and then it will uh, go through the citric acid cycle. So this Krebs cycle will only produce two ATPs. Okay, any NADH and FADH2 produced in the citric acid or Krebs cycle will again uh, be used on the last stage of our uh, of our cellular respiration. So the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis is known as the oxidative phosphorylation. So that is the other term for the two process happened in this last stage. So this is the largest amount or th this process is, uh, this process produces the large or largest amount of the ATP. Where in total, it produces 34 adenosine triphosphate. So overall, these are the uh, ATP produces in each cycles or stages. So glycolysis to ATP, citric acid to ATP. In oxidative phosphorylation, it produces 34 ATP. Okay, so let's differentiate aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So the main difference, as you know, aerobic uses oxygen, anaerobic doesn't use oxygen. But they have different or they, they have several differences. So first, uh, let's start with their materials or their input. To run aerobic respiration, they need oxygen as well as the anaerobic respiration. And then the first step for them to break down the glucose is glycolysis. Also, with anaerobic respiration, we needed glycolysis. So when... Again, huh? glycolysis is the process of breaking down glucose. Next is the use of oxygen. Yes, aerobic respiration uses oxygen while anaerobic respiration doesn't use oxygen. Or breaking down of glucose can occur without oxygen and that is in the form of anaerobic respiration. So where does the aerobic respiration occur? So, there are two places. We have the cytoplasm 
uh, and then mitochondria. Cytoplasm is where the glycolysis happens, while the mitochondria uh, is the location where most of the ATP has been produced. And then the product of aerobic is water and carbon dioxide. While in this one, anaerobic respiration, since they doesn't use the mitochondria, okay, the glycolysis only occur, occur in cytoplasm, okay? And then the product could be alcohol or lactic acid. Next, how many, how many numbers of ATP that, are, that has been produced in aerobic? In total, that is 38, while anaerobic is 4 ATPs only. But... The net gain using the aerobic respiration is 36 ATP, while the anaerobic is 2 ATP. Okay, so that is the difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So let's take a look uh, for another definition for anaerobic respiration. So unlike aerobic respiration, anaerobic respiration is when energy provided without the need of oxygen. For example, in glucose. So glucose uh, can produce lactic acid and ATP, but a little bit of energy. Okay. So for example, in muscle cramps. Okay. So our muscle continue to move, continue to work, but it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have enough source of oxygen so what will happen to the muscle cells they will continue to produce energy without the use of oxygen but the amount of energy is only 2 atp therefore it produces lactic acid and later on lactic acid can can cause muscle cramps okay so this happens when the body can provide oxygen quick enough for aerobic respiration. So there we have a second, uh, what do we call this? May pangsalba, okay? If ever na hindi agarang makapag-produce ng aerobic respiration, there is a process, okay, ng anaerobic respiration, okay? Uh, in terms of practicality, anaerobic respiration is much quicker, than aerobic so as you can see aerobic have several stages unlike anaerobic only glycolysis they produce uh they produce atp na uh, here in lactic acid or here in anaerobic res uh, respiration there is a negative effect sa muscles natin so if there is a build up of lactic acid yes it can cause a fatigue and oxygen depth and later on we will experience muscle cramps okay Next, this is the example of anaerobic respiration. Okay, so this is the glycolysis. So the input is glucose, 6 carbonyan, and then uh, 2 ATP will donate phosphate. And then later on, okay, once it donated ATP, it will produce pyruvate. Okay, or pyrobic acid. So, yung 6 carbon natin, it will be broken down into 2. So, tag -ta tatlong carbon si pyrobate. And then later on, since it is anaerobic, ito po ay magpuproduce ng, uh, magpupunta na po sila sa, pro sa second process, which is the fermentation. There are two fate of our anaerobic respiration. We have lac uh, lactate, and ethanol okay so the pyruvate can be converted in ethanol using the alcoholic fermentation at lactate naman is for the lac uh, lactic acid fermentation okay so dito as you can see pyruvate can be ethanol once it produces carbon dioxide so itong anaerobic respiration class is commonly ginagamit siya ng mga uh, gawa ng wine. Okay, so what will happen kapag pinerment po natin yung wine or grapes juice using the yeast, it will produce carbon dioxide and later on, we can have ethanol or yung wine. Next naman po is yung pyruvate. It can also, uh, it will can be lactate 
Uh, example niyan is sa muscle cells. Okay? Formation of lactic acid. So, this is the aerobic respiration. Ito, so, ito yung pinakamahab, mahabang process ng cellular respiration natin. So, every life processes such as growth, development, defense, it needed energy or the adenosine triphosphate. So, in this process, our body produces its own energy okay? or the chemical energy. So, glucose plus oxygen will produce water carbon dioxide as a waste product and energy in the form of ATP. So the glucose we need came from the 6H12 and then the oxygen okay so do, during our respiration or breathing uh, oxygen will take in and then carbon dioxide will be taken out. So the water and carbon dioxide are breathed out. Energy itself. So this energy is used to synthesize a chemical called adenosine triphosphate, which transfers energy from chemical bonds to different cells within our body. Okay, so this is the uh, illustration of the aerobic respiration. So, napakita ko na yan kanina, no? First step is glycolysis. Second is Krebs cycle. And then, the last step is the electron transport chain. Okay? So, sunod-sunod po yan dapat. Okay? Kasi, there are products that's been released in glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and will be needed on the last step, which is the oxidative phosphorylation or our electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. Okay? So, first step, glycolysis. So, glycolysis is a sequence of 10 enzyme catalyzed reaction by which glucose is converted into pyruvate. Okay? So, ang pyruvate po, may iba't iba siyang chemical term, terminologies, pero pwede siyang pyruvic acid, pyruvate, or G3P. Okay, bakit G3P? So, glucose, three carbon yon and one phosphate. The second phase is produce two pyruvate molecules. Okay? So, this is a diagram that shows the fate of our glucose once it undergo glycolysis. So, here we have the six carbon, uh, six carbon glucose. Ayan. Ayan, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, ito pong glucose na to, kailangan siyang ma-breakdown. Once the ATP donated phosphate, therefore, each phosphate will attach at the end, each end of our glucose, and then it will be broken down. So, this G3P, okay, will become uh, the fate of pyruvate. But later on, kailangan pa niya ng another phosphate. So, therefore, another ATP will be Donate will donate phosphate for it to become three three carbon two phosphate. Later on, this molecule uh, this molecule will will get proton okay by NAD plus. So NAD plus will get proton or hydrogen hydrogen ion in our molecule, and then later on. 2 ADP will get phosphate. Okay, so kukunin niya yung dalawang phosphate ni ADP para po siya ay makonvert into 2 adenosine triphosphate. And then, at the end product of our glycolysis, we have pyruvate. So, same fate yan dito sa kabilang uh, glucose o yung sa kalahati ng ating glucose which is the G3P. So, what is the net? Therefore, 4 ATP form and 2 ATP use. Okay? Overall, the net is 2, 2 ATP. Ito po yung nagamit na yan. Ito po yung mga nagamit na ATP. Next, glucose. Sa glucose, syempre, ang fate niya ay mafoform into 2 pyruvate. Ito, ayan. Kung nakikita nyo sa aking cursor, no? Ito yung 2 pyruvate. And then, it will produce H2O. And then also, sa ating glycolysis, gumamit din tayo ng 2NADH. Okay? Sa, sa 2NADH, okay, plus 
four electron and then four hydrogen ion, it produces two NADPH plus two H. Okay. Okay, so here are another illustration for you to more under, to understand more about the process of glycolysis. So here is the glucose. Uh, uh, let's say it came from rice that we've eaten early morning, right? So glucose contains 6 carbon, 12 hydrogen, 6 oxygen. Okay, so si glucose will be converted into pyruvate. Paano nga po ba? Siyempre, kailangan mo nang magkaroon ng uh, donation okay? ng phosphate and ng electron para po makabuo ng pyruvate. So using the ATP, net ATP, or uutang muna siya dito sa glycolysis natin to produce 2 net ATP and 2 NADH. Next is the Krebs cycle or also known as the citric acid cycle. So citric acid cycle, uh, it is the second stage ng ating cellular respiration. Okay? So citric acid cycle completes the breakdown of the pyruvate and it occurs inside the mitochondria. So pumasok na sa powerhouse of the cell yung ating pyruvate. In addition... Siyempre, hindi siya makakapasok just the pyruvate. Kailangan mo nang may coenzyme A na mag-attach sa kanya to uh, para makasali doon sa Krebs cycle. So, the cycle oxidizes organic fuel which is what we know the enzyme or the acetyl coenzyme A. And this process generates 1 ATP, 3 NADH, and 1 FADH2. So, what will be the fate of this NADH and FADH2 that will be used later on on the last stage ng ating cellular respiration? This is the uh, Krebs cycle. Okay, so mukhang complicated lang yan sa una pero since siya ay cycle, paulit-ulit lang siya. Ang nadadagdag lang po sa laga natin dyan ay yung ating acetyl coenzyme A na naka-attach si pyruvate. Okay? So once the acetyl coenzyme A with the pyruvate, okay, it will be converted into citrate. Si citrate po will be converted into isocitrate. And Na, NADH po, yan. Uh, ito, syempre, si NADH, galing siya kay, uh, mag-convert siya dyan, and then it will re release carbon dioxide. So, from isocitrate, uh, it will become alpha-ketoglutarate. Okay? And another donation na naman ni NADH to produce carbon dioxide. Saan na pupunta yung carbon dioxide? Yung carbon dioxide na yan, it will be released through our uh, respiration. Okay? So, when when we breathe out, carbon dioxide is being released as the, se uh, as the sign that our cell um, uh, as the sign that our cell are doing uh, metabolic processes such as the cellular respiration. So, this alpha uh, ketoglutarate will become so, succinyl coenzyme A, and then it will produce ATP. So the cycle will go on. It will produce succinate, okay? And then for this molecule to become fumarate, the FA, FADH2 uh, will get another hydrogen, and then it will become malate, okay? So another donation of from the NADH, it will become oxaloacetate and then the cycle of uh, citric acid will go on. Okay, so what will be the purpose of this Krebs cycle? So the purpose of this Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle is for us to generate 8 NADH, 2 FADH2, and 2 ATP and the last product of our cycle is to produce 6 
carbon dioxide. So, these are the product of Krebs cycle. So, kaya lang po siya nag exist para later on, itong mga product na to ay gagamitin sa ating uh, oxidative phosphorylation which is the main event because it produces the large amount or large number of our ATP. While the 6 carbon dioxide naman po is the one uh, to be released or it is a waste product. Okay, so this is the crisp cycle that is pyruvate. So mag-attach sa kanya si acetyl coenzyme A and then later on Okay, for it to become, to oxidize, napakaraming process na mangyayari sa kanya, no? For them, uh, for it to produce NADH, FADH, ATP, and carbon dioxide. Okay? So next, ayan, dito na tayo sa main event. <laughs> Kasi dito nga, tulad na sabi ko, pinakamaraming number of ATP ang na produce So, electron transport chain is the final stage of the aerobic respiration. So, it is also known as oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, oxidative phosphorylation uh, in the presence of the oxygen energy is released to allow phosphorylation of ADP. Kasi nga po, uh, dito po nagkakaroon ng phosphorylation of AT ADP to become ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Medyo nakakalito. Okay, sige po. Dahan-dahanin natin siya sa ating discussion para po makafollow kayo. So, this occur in the electron transport chain and then it require, syempre, oxygen to accept the electron and hydrogen at the end and it reduces the NADA. NAD and FAD. Saan nang galing yung NAD saka FAD? Siyempre, galing siya sa Krebs cycle or yung sa citric acid which are uh, which are carrying hydrogen, which are carrying hydrogen. And the last one, uh, electron carrier or the cytochrome. So this is the illustration for our electron transport chain. So letter A that is the cytoplasm that is outside outside the mitochondria. B C D E is the inner membrane of our mitochondria or commonly this is the membrane for the mitochondria. B is the outer membrane of our mitochondria. C is the intermembrane space where most of the hydrogen ions are uh, where hydrogen ions created a gradient okay later on sa process ng electron transport chain natin and d is the inner membrane so ito po yung ano cristae o yung part ng ating mitochondria yung parang uh, curl curl parang curly structure inside the mitochondria. Yung inner membrane yun. And then, itong letter E, that is the um, mitochondrial matrix. Okay, as you can see, napakaraming embedded na electron transport chain dito. So, ilan sila? Apat. Okay? So, meron tayong uh, meron tayong complex 1, complex 2, complex 3, complex 4. Okay? At the same time, sa electron transport chain, kasama din dyan si Q, co coenzyme Q, and cytochrome C. Okay? So, ano pong pangalan ni uh, complex 1? Si complex 1 po ay tinatawag natin na oxidoreductase. Complex 2 is the succinate dehydrogenase. At yung Q na nasa taas niya, siya si coenzyme Q or the ubiquinone. Si complex 3, ang name niya ay si cytochrome complex. Okay? And then, uh, etong C, 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 siya po yung ano na, cytochrome C. And ang complex 4 naman natin ay si cytochrome C oxidase. Okay, so ito pong lahat ng ito na nabanggit ko na 1 to 4 ubiquinone sa cytochrome C, sila po yung involved for electron transport chain. Again, for electron transport chain. So, ang tinatransport nila ay electron, the negative charge of an 
atom. And then, dito naman po sa kabila, yung number 6, ito yung tinatawag natin na chemiosmosis. Dito nangyayari yung process ng chemiosmosis natin, which is, ang tawag dyan sa complex na yan is the ATP synthase. Okay? So, ATP synthase na siya. Okay? And gets po, again, complex 1, 2, 3, 4. And then, number 6 natin is the ATP synthase. So, paano po nag- uh, Paano nagsisimula ang ating electron transport chain? NADH will donate electron sa complex 1. Okay? So, kapag kapag nag-donate si NADH ng electron sa ating sa ating complex 1, yung hydrogen ion niya mapupunta doon sa ating intermembrane space. So, later on, maiipon niya ng maiipon. So, it will become more positively charged dito. Kaya po magkikreate siya ng gradient. So, once po na nakuha na ni complex 1, since it is a transport chain, ito transport niya electron papunta sa ubiquinone. So, si ubiquinone naman po, ito transport niya electron papunta sa complex 3. Si complex 3, ipapasa niya yung electron kay cytochrome C. And si cytochrome C, ipapasa niya ang ating uh, electron papunta sa complex number 4. So, what will happen dun sa ating electron? Napakahaba ng kanyang tinravel, no? So, the electron will be donated, okay? Okay, dito sa ating O2 and 2H positive for them to create H2O. Okay? So, from uh, NADH that donated electron, so it will become NAD+. And on, as you can see, no? Ang daan ng electron niya ay 1, Q, 3, 4. Ano naman po yung 2? Si 2 po, ang kanya ay, it works specific, specifically. Okay, kasi di ba ang name niya ay si succinate dehydrogenase. Ito po ay nag-work lang kay FADH2. So, ang gagawin niya, ibe-break down niya yung uh, FADH2 to become FAD. And then, yung FAD natin, ayan, yung FAD natin, uh, yung electron niya, idodonate niya kay complex 2. Dadalhin ni ubiquinone sa complex 3, papunta sa cytochrome C, papunta sa uh, complex 4. And then, at the same time, ito po ay gagamitin ni oxygen 2, O2, 2H positive to create water or H2O. At the same time plus, simultaneously, yung mga complex gradient or yung protein electron transport chain natin, sila po ay nagta-transport ng H positive or hydrogen ion dito sa ating uh, intermembrane space, dito sa C. So once po na mas naging positive ang dumami, ang positive charge, and less ang positive charge ng ating uh, mitochondrial matrix o yung letter E, ang mangyayari po, gagana yung ating ATP synthase o ma magkakaroon tayo ng process na tinatawag nating chemiosmosis. So, ATP synthase, it works like a rotor. So, once we have a higher concentration here at our intermembrane, it will again uh, posporulate the ADP and posit, uh, phosphate to become adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so that is the electron transport chain. So, ito po yung another uh, illustration for you to understand uh, ETC. Okay, so these are the different uh, electron transport chain, no? Ayan, mga pro a protein complex. And then this is the ATP synthase, yung pinakalas. Dito nangyayari yung chemiosmosis. Okay, so si NADH magdo-donate ng electron, kukunin ng ating ETC or electron trans uh, carrier. At the same time, si FADH naman din po ay magdo-donate ng electron. 
Okay, so at uh, simultaneously yung ating complex o yung ating tinatawag na electron uh, uh, protein complex nag-move o nag sila ay nagta-transport ng hydrogen ion sa another membrane ng ating uh, mitochondria. So what will happen? Okay, since the there will be a higher positive proton of gradient or proton gradient at the intermembrane ng ating mitochondria, the ATP synthase will now start to undergo the process of chemiosmosis. So, ano gagawin niya? Si phosphate para makagawa ng ATP synthase. Uh, makagawa ng ATP or adenosine triphosphate. And ay Inonate ni NADH at FADH, FADH2 ay gagawin po bilang ayan, H2O or is the ah, ito naman po ay uh, outline. So, para makita natin yung different processes ng ating cellular respiration at the same time how many net harvest of the adenosine triphosphate. So the first, or we will start um, to ATP to produce uh, for ATP. Pero since gumamit ng 2 kanina, ang net lang natin ay 2 ATP. And that is in the process of glycolysis. And then the glycolysis will produce a product known as the pyrobic acid or pyrobate. So, si pyrobate, uh, magkakapag-produce siya ng 2 NADH and carbon dioxide. So, papasok po siya sa Krebs cycle natin with the use of acetyl coenzyme A. So, si acetyl coenzyme A magraran dito sa ating Krebs cycle gagamit ng 8 NADH to produce 4 carbon dioxide. Also, Yung 2-FADH2 ay makapag-produce ng 2-ATP. Itong dalawang to, uh, 8 molecule ng NADH at 2 molecule ng FADH2, sila po ay gagamitin sa electron transport chain o yung alam uh, kilala natin bilang oxidative phosphorylation. So dito po mangyayari yung chemiosmosis. So, dun sa chemiosmosis class, same with the electron transport chain, sila ay makagawa na 34 ATP. Okay? So, the net harvest of our cellular respiration is 38 adenosine triphosphate. Okay? So, here is the process of fermentation. Ito naman yung, nangyaya, yung process kapag hindi kailangan ng oxygen. Okay, so ang tawag natin doon is anaerobic respiration. No? So from the uh, <clears throat> fermentation of anaerobic without the presence of oxygen, it could have two fate, alcoholic per alcohol fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. So ang net ATP nila ay two lang. Okay, two. Dalawa lang po yung kaya nilang maproduce kasi nga back up siya, di ba? So uh, kapag ka na kailangan lang ng isang organism. Okay? So, this is the cycle ng anaerobic glucose. Okay? So, as you can see, uh, yung ating NADH, kumuha siya ng hydrogen. Okay? Yung 2 ADP natin, kumuha din po siya ng uh, electron para makagawa ng 2 ATP. And it will produce a pyrobic acid. Since there is no availability of oxygen, Yung bacteria po, ah, yung bacteria, ma, pwede sila makapag-produce ng uh, lactic acid. And then yung yeast, ayan, so po, pwede siya makapag-produce ng 2 ethanol. Next. Ayan, okay. So, that is the end of our uh, discussion for the cellular respiration. If you have any question, you can message or chat on our GC. Okay, that's all. Thank you and goodbye.